All right, welcome to lecture 10-1. First, we're going to cover the knee, and then we'll move into talking about the leg and the popliteal fossa. So we've already discussed the um, osteology of the knee, uh, so uh, no need to belabor that. Please review. Uh, moving on to the ligaments of the joint, the knee joint. So, of course, again, we always are talking about the ligaments that help stabilize a joint uh, and allow for movement. So, uh, again, just like every other synovial joint in the body, there is a, a set of uh, collateral ligaments that help stabilize that joint. So, these collateral ligaments are on either side of the knee, the medial and lateral uh, ligaments. Uh, so we see here uh, the lateral ligament and the medial ligament identified on these structures. The uh, lateral collateral ligament is a uh, very strong uh, cord-like structure. So it's rounded, very stable, um, kind of like a rope or a cord. Uh, and it stabilizes uh, the lateral portion attaching to the uh, fibular head. <clears throat> the medial collateral ligament is flatter, more like a band, um, a, a flat structure. It's strong, but not quite as strong as the lateral collateral ligament. Uh, so uh, it's attaching on the medial side from the epicondyle, the medial epicondyle of the femur down to the condyle of the uh, tibia. So this one attaches also uh, to the medial meniscus within the knee joint. Uh, and so because of that, um, that, that has some consequences for um, how the knee joint moves and, and the strength and structure of the knee joint, which we'll get to in a minute. But now let's talk about these ligaments inside the knee, the cruciate ligaments. There are two of them. There's the anterior cruciate ligament and the uh, posterior cruciate ligament. Uh, so these restrict anterior-posterior movement of the tibia on uh, the femur. So the anterior restricts the anterior displacement of the femur, as if my, my uh, anterior displacement of the tibia under the femur, as if my femur were moving away from me. Posterior cruciate ligament uh, restricts movement toward, uh, toward the body, toward me, in the posterior direction. And so this unique uh, structure is most easily remembered by taking the... So if I want to understand the orientation of my right uh, cruciate ligaments, I take my right hand and I move my middle finger atop my index finger. This is the anterior cruciate ligament and this is the posterior cruciate ligament. So that is a good approximation of their structures. And then you can place that over your knee and visualize how those cruciate ligaments are uh, oriented within the knee joint. <clears throat> so now let's talk about these menisci that I alluded to. Of course, the uh, medial meniscus on the medial side and the lateral meniscus on the lateral side. Uh, so the uh, medial meniscus is uh, strongly associated with the uh, medial collateral ligament. Uh, so, the result of this is that if there is damage uh, to the knee joint that causes a lateral flexion of the tibia, uh, you know, twisting rotation of the tibia away from uh, the center of gravity, as if there is an impact to the lateral knee, the lateral side of the knee, that will cause flexion, uh, oh, so this is moving laterally, so something has impacted laterally the knee joint, causing a strain on the medial cruciate ligament. So you sometimes see this uh, type of injury in sporting events, uh, contact sports, like uh, perhaps American football, where a, a player gets tackled uh, from the lateral side right at their knee, causing uh, an excess uh, lateral flexion of the knee. And so that ends up tearing the MCL, or the uh, medial collateral ligament. It also ends up, because the medial meniscus is so closely associated with it, it also ends up pulling the medial meniscus away from the inside of the joint, or, or causing tearing to the medial meniscus as well. 
Uh, furthermore, the ACL is commonly impacted because the ACL is closely associated with the uh, medial meniscus as well as you can see in this drawing. So this is a superior view of the right knee. Uh, you can see the patellar ligament here. This is the tibial plateau. So we're looking down on top of the tibial plateau of the right knee. Uh, so uh, for that reason, the MCL, ACL, and medial meniscus are referred to uh, sometimes as the terrible triad. <clears throat> so here in, in these drawings, we can see with different orientations or, or movements of the knee, what, must, what uh, ligaments in red are uh, taut or fully tightened. So here when the knee is fully extended, we see that uh, the collateral ligaments and the ACL are taut. So if there's uh, a damage to or an impact to the knee when the knee is extended, then these are the ligaments that are most likely to get damaged because they're already strained and tight. When the um, knee is flexed, then what you have is a tight uh, PCL. So if um, a, like a person in a seated position uh, is impacted in their legs, then it's most likely that the PCL will be damaged. So this can occur, uh, for instance, in a car wreck uh, where the person is moving forward in their seated position as if, you know, they're driving in a wreck, head-on collision, bam, and their knee uh, impacts the dash or something uh, of that sort, then the PCL is, is the structure that is most likely to get damaged because it's the structure that is tightest in that position. And so to test for damage to these uh, ligament structures, the ACL or the PCL, what you look for is something called the drawer sign, as if a drawer that you're pulling in and out of a cabinet or a desk. So uh, in order to test for a damage to uh, the ACL, you'll look for the anterior drawer sign. So I'll do it based on this picture. So what you do is, so you're seated in front of a patient and you pull that patient's tibia leg towards you. If you can displace their leg away from the femur towards you, then that is a positive anterior drawer sign, which indicates uh, damage to the ACL. Damage to the PCL will result in a posterior drawer sign. If you push the leg of a patient toward them, away from you when you're sitting in front of them, and you can displace the leg under the femur, then that indicates the a positive posterior drawer sign, uh, which means that there's likely damage to the PCL. Uh, so those are ways to test for that type of damage. And so PCL, again, damage to PCL is caused by hyperflexion of the knee, whereas rupture of the ACL is caused by rotation or hyperextension at the knee. <clears throat> Another condition to be aware of, especially in youth athletes, younger uh, athletes, is something called the osgood schlatter disease. In this condition, excess uh, uh, use of the quadriceps muscle, excess extension of the leg, can result in pulling away of the uh, patellar ligament away from its attachment to the tibial tuberosity. Uh, what can result is because the, um, the growth plates of the bones have not solidified yet and the, the leg joints are still uh, expanding, the, the bones are still expanding and growing, the bone at the end of the, at the tibia is weaker than in an adult. And what can happen is that bone, the tibial tuberosity, can actually be pulled away by the tibial ligament in these conditions. So again, this is usually caused by excess use of quadriceps muscle in younger athletes. Uh, often it can be repaired with just rest as the bone uh, you know, repairs itself as it grows still in, in youth, youthful condition, which can take months. Uh, depending on the extent of the impairment. Uh, so uh, if it's, the impairment is too uh, great, then it requires uh, you know, uh, 
surgical repair uh, with probably bolts and uh, attachments depending on the extent of the damage. So now we're talking about the vasculature of the knee. So here we are, have a, we have a posterior view of the knee joint. We're looking at it from behind the thigh and leg. We can see adductor magnus uh, still associated up here, <coughs> forming the adductor hiatus. When the femoral artery travels through adductor hiatus, it changes its name to popliteal artery. Popliteal artery because the posterior region here is called the popliteal fossa, which we'll define in a little bit. The popliteal artery is going to give off genicular branches, four of them in particular. There are two superior and two inferior genicular branches. The superior genicular arteries are called medial and lateral uh, superior uh, genicular arteries. The two inferior are called medial and lateral inferior genicular arteries. So uh, too easy. You don't even have to memorize that. They're named for what they supply, which is the genu of the leg or the knee of the leg. They are genicular arteries. Uh, so when we get into the leg, we'll, all, we'll be following this popliteal artery as it gives off its branches. First the anterior tibial uh, artery, then forming the posterior tibial artery after that branching point, giving off the fibular artery. So we'll continue that in the leg di uh, discussion, which will be a separate video coming up next.